All right, teammates, 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 we are back once again. If this is your first time listening to the Move Swiftly podcast, welcome to the number one show on Innovative Teamwork. Great to have you. To my regular listeners, you already know how I get down right to the point. And again, I have an absolutely, listen, listen to me, listen to me very carefully. You are about to be blown away by this man's story. I listened to, listen, Manuj, I listened to you earlier today. I listened to quite a few shows that you've been on just prepping for this. And one of the things that, can be assumed when you're talking about AI, when you're talking about, you know, being in technology and things like that is that, you know, it can be something that can be assumed that this is a person whose life was easy and they're trying to make everybody's else, everybody else's life really easy and things like that. But you have quite the background, you have quite the story and I, and I, I can't wait to dive into it too much. Let me, before I make the intro too long, let me just let, kind of let you introduce yourself to the audience and uh, just kind of introduce yourself a little bit and then we'll get into your story and how you built up such an incredible concept and how you have such a pulse on the AI world and how to use it in a way in which helps people better themselves. You know, you have a, a concept and when it comes to that. So with all that, welcome to the show. And this is how Thank we, so much. Thank we keep it all the way organic, by the way. So yeah. and do your excited thing. to be excited to be here. And thanks for that intro. Mm -hmm. Um, To uh, t tell you a little bit about me. So I, I grew up in India, um, not, uh, not in a very uh, wealthy environment. Um, I had a lot of challenges. Um, started working uh, professionally at 15 uh, while I was attending school and I was uh, go, uh, working in a factory earning two dollars a day uh, working 12 hours a day and uh, that was a tough life and wanted to change my life uh, wanted to do something better because I got inspiration from some business magazines I was uh, flipping through these business magazines and um, there were these stories of uh, tycoons who made it big Mm -hmm. uh, in spite of all the hardships they went through. And that inspired me that, hey, you know, if these guys can do it, then I should be able to do it. But then I didn't know how to change my life, what to do about it. Right. And um, uh, I found that I needed to build some value, learn something valuable. And that is how I will be able to change my life. Uh, and so when I looked around, uh, computers and internet were just coming out like this is 1995 right. and I I was uh, somebody who was already interested in technology science so I got into that and I really loved it I really fell in love with software for uh, programming and and computers and that's when I knew okay you know I will do this for the rest of my life um, uh, I didn't know where it is going to lead me right. but I found my passion and the other thing which I which I found was like I really like impacting large number of people. So that uh, you know, with software you could do that. Like you can write a line of code and copy it on like hundreds of computers, thousands of computers, right. and it helps those people who uh, are using your program, right? Mm -hmm. So all of this came together, and and uh, you know, uh, one thing led to another. I came to North America. Uh, started helping tons of uh, startups two startups went uh, public uh, you know their technology i built their technology then uh, i got a chance to uh, work with uh, microsoft ibm t mobile some very large uh, corporations so i saw how small businesses they grow right. and i saw how large businesses they keep getting bigger mm -hmm. and uh, in the meantime i was getting heavily into ai so today I have four patents in artificial intelligence, wrote a couple of books on technology. Right. I have another podcast as well, which is one of the top 1% podcasts in the world. Mm -hmm. um, throughout all this, like I had episodes of, you know, your life ups and downs. So yeah, that's uh, what I, I was going to kind of ask you about because, you know, you and you said a lot there and I want to make sure I slow you down to break yeah. everything down for a listener who may who may be going through certain things and, and may assume that stuff just happens overnight. It doesn't. All right. I want to make that very clear to you, listener. It does not happen overnight because when you came to North America, again, you're helping these startups and you're working 25 hours out of the day. All right. I said 25 mm -hmm. hours a day, not 24. You're working constantly. And I had heard you on some other shows, how you talked about how that disrupted your family life, how it was difficult for you to see your kids and how you were faced with some of these decisions that, are that challenge all of us in terms of how do I continue to pursue what I love 
yet still be there, the family man that I want to be, and then help these startups that obviously going to require your, you know, require your 100% attention. So kind of speak to that a little bit and how yeah, you yeah. Look to find yeah, out. So, uh, in my personal life, you know, um, I've had a lot of ups and downs in my personal life, um, mm -hmm. uh, even in my professional life. So um, I got married uh, in India where, uh, you know, it's not customary to pick your own spouse. But mm. uh, I, I ended up uh, falling in love with a, a girl uh, and uh, she belonged to a different religion. So that was another a layer oh, of complexity. Oh, boy, here we go. So, I didn't yeah, know we could go with that one, boy. <laughs> yeah. so, so it was quite a complex, uh, you know, a thing for, for me to get married. Mm -hmm. Once I get ma got married, then a lot of uh, differences between us came about, mm -hmm. which were not apparent before the marriage, as, as it generally happens. And so that led uh, to a very tough marriage. And uh broken relationships with my spouse with my parents with my uh, family and that led to you know almost uh, a depressed uh, depression uh, like scenario for me so around 2012 i was uh, almost suicidal like i i didn't want to live anymore oh my and, god and um, yeah so so as i was going through all this you know i was working in artificial intelligence with blockchain with all these latest technologies while i'm dealing with my own inner struggle. So right. I went to see uh, these psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, therapists, but nothing really helped. What eventually helped was uh, I found meditation. And meditation is oh, something that's that allows awesome. you to go inside. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Really understand uh, your mind, how it creates your reality. Yeah. And so, so I, first of all, anybody listening who is going through anything in life, mm -hmm. even if they are not going through anything in life. I think meditation is something that should be almost mandatory for every human being, right? right? So for me, uh, my, you know, I lived my life um, under stress for almost four decades of my life. Mm -hmm. Now my sons are 12 and 14. So I, I, I make them meditate at this age so mm -hmm. that, you know, Life is going to throw curveballs at you no matter what. Mm -hmm. Once you start knowing you inside out, you are much better equipped to handle those curveballs. So it's very, very uh, surprising to me that we teach our kids, you know, maths, physics, science, English, mm -hmm. but we don't teach them how to understand themselves, how to communicate with other human beings, uh, all of that. So right. the, what I've learned in it's my life is... Like can you um sort of break that down a little further? Because we had a previous guest on the show and she teaches meditation, but she doesn't teach it in a way where you spend four hours a day, you know, trying to get in there and, you know, spend four hours a day, basically meditate. She teaches it in a way where you may spend maybe five minutes every, you know, three or four times a day, five minutes is focusing your spirit, you know, focusing your goals, focusing on what do you want to do? And I think sometimes when people hear the term meditation, they think it's going to be something where they got to block out four or five hours and you've just debunked the myth. She debunked the myth. So can you kind of speak to how yeah, you yeah. teach that to young people as well? Your kids. That's a great, I, a great uh, question. See meditation, in my opinion, first of all, is anything that disconnects you from the world. Okay. It allows you to focus oh, hey, on yourself. Talk to yes. Okay. <laughs> so let's say you love basketball. And mm -hmm. you go to the gym and you, uh, you know, shoot a uh, hundred hoops. And during that period, you just forget about everything else. And you are just there mm -hmm. with the basketball and the hoop. That's it. You could call that meditation. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have my mentor. He loves motorcycle uh, racing. So he says when he goes on to, onto the course and when he's, you know, uh, going hundred miles an hour, that's his meditation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the idea here is that, um, first of all, our our life is controlled by our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is very, very powerful. 90 to 95% of what we experience in life is controlled by subconscious mind. But most people have no idea what is happening in there. It's a, we, we, we live through our emotional response. But with meditation, when you start to quiet down your mind and you start to notice what are your thoughts, it's meditation basically is just watching your thoughts. You know, what is happening in my thought? 
Mm-hmm. When you start noticing it, then you start getting access into your that 95% of your brain or your mind, mm-hmm. which is your subconscious mind. And you start to understand, hey, why do I do certain things? Why do I get irritated by this? Why do I get, uh, you know, like react like this to uh, mm-hmm. to this situation? All of that. And once you start to understand it, then you can start to change your behavior. And you can say, hey, you know, life is not happening to me. Life is happening for me. For me. Yes, so that sir. I can, how, it, how can I, on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how can I leverage what is happening for me and I can convert it into a win for me mm-hmm. rather than uh, a loss for me. So, uh, you know, you could, you could pick up any meditation app. You could, you know, stay quiet, go to a Buddhist monastery. There are hundreds of ways to meditate. There is no single way, mm-hmm. but just start doing it and you'll start to see a lot of uh, benefit out of that very, very soon. Right. So how did it, how were you able to make your kind of your revitalization, your next move then? Because you just said it, viewers, I I didn't even know this, but you were to the point where you were suicidal. You were to the point where you wanted to take, I mean, that's, that's a serious thing. That's a lot of serious things that you're going through, but eventually you found meditation and what happened after that? How were you able to revitalize your your thoughts and say, look, I am worth living. I am somebody. I do belong here. There's certain things that I'm meant to do here and I will be, I will be foolish to take my own life. When did you get yeah. to that confidence, you know, and build that? See, uh, well, I mean, as soon as I had suicidal thoughts, I knew that I was going on a wrong path. I mean, obviously I had kids and I had, you know, a family and I had a professional life, uh, people depending upon me. So I knew that I was going down the wrong path right away and I needed help. I needed to figure out how to fix myself. That's for sure. Now, until I did get some help, I was going deeper into it. Like I was getting more depressed, but you Mm -hmm. know, just like, you know, you, you are, you have, you, we all have an inner voice, right? When you start that inner voice tells you, okay, you know, this is the right path. So it was just a matter of finding the right solution and after trying, you know, again, when you're when you're like sinking, you try everything. You know, you talk to everybody. You you talk to like I even um, talk to people uh, like who could tell the future, and you know they you know uh, mm-hmm. they read your palms and what. So you so try could... everything, right? Uh, but then uh, you you don't feel any relief. But when I started meditating, like within a week or so, I started looking inside me, and I said, hey. I've been looking for solutions outside and I've been blaming people for my problems outside. But when I look inside, I see this is how I'm creating my own problems. This is why Uh, this is happening to me. So the the solution is not outside. The solution is inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. That happens and you get there and I want to make this very clear for you listeners. This is not a one-time thing. This is a process. This is an every single day process to the point where, like you said, it becomes your subconscious mind. It becomes your subconscious behavior. You get a rejection. It's almost in your subconscious mind. Like, okay, I'm motivated. You know, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to move on. It becomes something that you have to become. You cannot just do it once and expect to see results, right? Obviously, you're one of the individuals who didn't just do it once. You you built up a massive platform. You have a lot of great things. And you threw out some stats about your podcast that I didn't even know about. I mean, you're doing some absolutely incredible work. Talk, you know, walk us through that time where you found meditation to where now you have this massive platform and, you you know, you're just absolutely doing your thing, man. <laughs> kind of walk. Yeah, us through. I mean, you know, it's as you said, uh, it's a it's a long process. In my opinion, uh, it's a lifelong process because you there is no depth uh, depth to your a human being is a very complex uh you know structure and once you start getting deeper and deeper and deeper you will find there is no uh, uh there is no bottom like there is no end to it like you know you could you could reach a state of uh, you know like uh, like a buddha jesus christ and uh you know all, all these great people uh, they were one with the universe right so you could uh, pursue meditation until you reach that kind of state right all right now as you go through uh, when you hit rock bottom it's not like you 
you find meditation in a week like you are like flying high no yeah. uh you know it's it's a it's a journey from rock bottom to you know a little bit by little bit okay you know, like now That's life is getting a little bit better and then again you know uh until around 2018 it was just like okay life is now getting better it's kind of stable mm -hmm. and i didn't know i mean i was uh, you know my 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 day my days were uh, just working with computers like software engineering and building programs and what not so it, it wasn't like i was a well known personality or anything like that you know right. i didn't have like a lot of client it was just basically just you know couple of clients through word of mouth mm -hmm. and then in 2018 my mom passed away and that really shook me uh, yeah internally i was like okay because i didn't have a good relationship with her and i thought okay you know once i achieve something i'll 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 go i'll go back and i will um make some amends and i will improve my relationship but it didn't happen mm -hmm. and that made me realize how our life is short so short and, it, and anything can happen at any time wow. and so uh, that gave me a real push to change the trajectory of my life and take more control of my life i said okay i want to travel more i want to go visit my family i want to uh, you know impact more people now it became almost like a mission for me mm -hmm. and um, in one of my meditations it actually uh, happened to me i i got a message that i am going to help 20 people win the nobel prize so i was like wow this is like crazy so mm -hmm. even i thought i was going crazy some other people thought i was going crazy but as i leaned into it as i learned okay how our human psychology works how neuroscience works mm -hmm. how artificial intelligence works when i put all this together it is feasible for to impact millions of people and get them out of their shells and get their message heard uh, so mm -hmm. i started to build my platform using these techniques and then i started helping other people build their platform using these techniques and it it is all in the pursuit of you know utilizing all the all the pain that i went through mm -hmm. the lessons i learned and package it into something that is meaningful that is impactful for anybody else who wants to walk that path so what made well, well first of all thank you for being transparent and open and my condolences with with your mother i know that's a very very challenging thing to go through, especially seeing that you still had things to say. And then to take the yeah. approach of, look, I'm going to honor her. I'm going to honor what she's doing. I'm sure she's looking down on you proud as can be of her baby boy. That's, mm -hmm. I have to just say that. All right. Mm -hmm. And the question I do have, though, is how does when you say you package all the technology and you build platforms, what makes your approach unique? Because I'll, I'll be 100% honest with you, Matt. Every time I hear technology, I get intimidated. I don't know. I'm just willing to pay somebody. I'm like, look, you do the tech stuff. Let me do the speaking, the recording, the other, the performing. But when it comes to the tech, I will pay someone because I'm intimidated by it. I don't know where it works. And with somebody like you, I don't know what to do. Sure, sure, right? sure. So, you know, please, what makes your stuff unique? Yeah, yeah. So let, let, let's take the fear first out, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, we are sitting in front of our uh, webcams talking to each other. Uh, I bet uh, I, I have no idea how the webcam works. When mm -hmm. you drive your car and go to the grocery store, um, unless you are really into cars or, you know, you're very knowledgeable, none of us know actually how the car works, right? It just works. So we trust the technology works. Now, when we talk about software or especially around AI, there is a lot of fear because, you know, in Hollywood movies, they have depicted uh, Terminator and Skynet and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we associate AI with another intelligent species who is out there to get us. Hmm. But if we if we notice that AI is nothing new, it has been around since 1970s. And if you are carrying a smartphone in your pocket, you are already using AI. Mm -hmm. If you have ordered something from Amazon, you have already used AI. If you have if you are on Facebook or LinkedIn, you are already using AI, right? Mm -hmm. So the world around us is already controlled by AI. Now, uh, in 2022, when ChatGPT came along, what happened was everyday person got access to AI. And mm -hmm. now everybody can use it. So the idea behind 
packaging all this is fundamentally our world is based on uh our world is based on human relationships okay yes so anything that we get in our life is given to us by somebody else every dollar every cent everything everything is given to us by somebody else even mm -hmm. our life is given to us by our parents mm -hmm. correct yes now when somebody decides to give something to us be before that happens there is a relationship or bond that is formed yes yeah and in order to create that bond or relationship you need to have a conversation with that person mm -hmm. now we are having this conversation and we are building a relationship right right now going back to my previous comment we teach our kids how to do complex mathematics and science and what not mm -hmm. but we never teach our kids how to communicate right right so now if i add ai into the mix i can turn any person into a great communicator hmm right what is a communication communication is asking really good questions yeah and telling really good stories right. that's the basis of a good conversation mm -hmm. so if i put all this together with ai i can turn you into a great communicator because you'll be able to ask great questions which right. you are already asking mm -hmm. you will be able to tell great stories which you are already telling right. but a lot of other people cannot do that right but right. even you can become much much better at it if right. you start using uh, technologies like ai yeah. and that turns you into a machine who a relationship machine you yeah. can build relationships on scale with anybody in the world right and now you become this superhuman who can achieve anything in life because you have so many people around you supporting you does that right. make sense yeah so but but it makes sense with the way you're saying it but the question now is like how do you fight against the people who use it the wrong way because myself as a creator i want to write my own articles i want to be the one writing and doing the work because i am a creator and this is what i do and i hear you know, some sort of artificial intelligence is going to be writing my books for me and doing all that stuff. I'm like, hold up now, this is my thing. And you get people who may just use, like, I'll give you an example. There was a situation last year where I teach at a school and they were to do a graduation. And instead of the teacher actually writing a speech, she just said, ah, oh, well, I'm going to just chat GPT something real quick and just spit it off to the parents. So it's like, are you really, is it really authentic? You know, how do you manage the people that, sure, that sure. use it in a so let's let's add uh, let's add uh, more detail to that right right so written language was invented about 3500 years ago or so right yeah. now at that time only few people knew how to read and write so the the people who used to write they were the knowledge uh, like they hold held the knowledge with, with, within themselves so they were promoted to high priest, kings, queens, whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. Then the printing press came along and people said, hey, you know, how, how's this going to work? Like, you know, we have the knowledge and mm -hmm. you are just going to like, you share it with uh, with the masses, like what, what's going on here, right? <laughs> right. So everybody got freaked out. Uh, but the idea is the knowledge is for everyone. We can share it. Right. Then, uh, then came uh, the internet, the computer, mm -hmm. you know, now, when you when you write your article, originally you you used to have to get a, a some sort of a skin of a of a of animal or a leaf and some natural ink to write. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The right? Ink pens, right? Exactly. Then now you got modern pens to write. Now mm -hmm. nobody writes with pen and paper; they write it on a computer. So mm -hmm. it's a tool that we use to express our thoughts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. AI is yet another tool that we can use to express our thoughts. Mm -hmm. But if they, as you said, if they are not our thoughts, it's not actually going to connect with anyone. Very true. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So I can take, uh, I can, I can, I can take a printing press and I can write a gobbledygook book on it. Mm -hmm. And I can say, okay, print out a hundred thousand copies. How many do you think will sell? Very Maybe 10. Maybe yeah, 10. Once you once they read it and they realize, hey, this isn't him, 
yeah, I'm exactly. not, and then the reviews go bad. Right, right, right. Okay, exactly. Saying, so, so if you if you if you understand technology is a tool, mm -hmm. and you can use that tool, but if there is no humanness in it, there is no human touch in it, there is no like you know your essence in it. It's right. not going to serve anybody. Uh, most of it, you, you know. So, yes, you can write a speech uh, if you are, you know. But but I always recommend use it in a way that reflects it, your tone, your voice, your uh, vocabulary, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and then then it will become very very effective. Yeah, because the the and I've just started using maybe Chat GPT maybe a few months ago, and it's only to do maybe the headlines because I have such long headlines on my articles. I'll say, hey, Chat GPT, a quicker way to say X, Y, and Z, and then they spit out a quicker way, and that makes a headline. But the article is still me. The uh, you know the little things are still me. And when they read that headline, they go, oh, yeah, that's that's some as one would say. And I'm now getting hip to it, and you know just. Playing with a little bit is very important for you guys to understand as well. Is it's yeah. not going to solve all your problems. The only thing is, like you said, it's going to make it so you're able to build relationships better, be able to communicate better, and you won't have so much of a burden. But don't think it's just going to solve all your problems, which yeah, is okay. what we tend to do when we see new technology. So it's important yeah. that we make that very, very clear. And one of the things that I actually I was listening to you earlier, you have a situation where you was recognized by our, I believe it was our former former president, Mr. President Barack Obama, because, and you can explain this a little better than me, but there was a situation in which you were able to use AI to keep kids in school, to keep kids in a situation where they're doing something productive. And I'm like, please, you know, just, just take the mic and talk me through this because I have yet, to, of all the stuff I hear, I've yet to hear that connection between a kid staying in school because of AI and it's because of something you use. So, you know, go yeah. ahead and get away when it comes to that. <laughs> See, uh, it, it's a simple, simple thing. Um, you know, 30% uh, of the students drop out of their degree programs. And this is higher education, by the way. Yeah. So degree programs uh, in the first two years. And the reason is because we know that all these kids are under huge pressure, like, uh, you know, uh, tuition fees and, and uh, uh, loans for their tuition fee. Mm -hmm. And moreover, the career counselors they go to, I mean, most people, I mean, I'm not blaming anybody here, but most people, uh, when they recommend which direction these kids should go in, they don't really have an idea what the kid likes. They mm -hmm. only think about what they think is rational for that kid right. or where the job market is going to be. So they say, oh, you know, you should go into um, a, a medicine or you should go into like engineering or whatever it is. Yeah. He is that most most people may not have interest in that or may they may find it very, very difficult to do these courses. And so what happens is they get demoralized in the first couple of years. Uh, they find it too difficult or boring and then they drop out, right? Mm -hmm. So what we did was we said, okay, this, this, there's a better way to do this. So we collected uh, data from hundreds of thousands of students, their school transcripts, SAT scores, their extracurricular activities, so we came up with a model to understand what kind of student likes what kind of courses and in what courses they excel at, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very much similar to when you watch Netflix, it will know what kind of shows you like and it'll start recommending those shows to you. So yeah. similarly, we study the behavior of students and as they're enrolling into a degree program, we say, okay, based on your past data, you should take these courses and now since it's based yeah. on data it's much more accurate and um and the impact was you know uh, students stayed in their uh, mm. degree programs in fact 20 uh, i think uh, statistically the students took 20% more courses than were required to finish their degree program exactly 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 thousand times exactly and i'm speaking from the perspective of an educator someone that has gone to many different any type of school that you can think of i've been there i've been a part of so many different types of schools and my biggest gripe with the college system with the school system is that they give you so many different options that you don't actually know which one you want so you end up going there you're paying your tuition you're there and you're just there to be there you have no apps no intention 
on figuring out exactly what it is you want to do. And if you say, let's say you want to be a, a writer or oh, writers don't make no money. Well, hey, how do I know what I'm going to write about? You know, there, there's so many things, so many loopholes in the system that, you know, people like you are able to fill with AI. And, you know, that that is a very, very important thing, because the more and more that comes out, the more lost kids that are coming out after graduation, all that kind of stuff. If it's used correctly, we can save a lot of people and just save an entire education system that, frankly, has failed the kids on so many levels. In my new, so it, it it is very important. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Um, is there a way to that you are leveraging that? You know, kind of what kind of talk about what's next and how people can get in touch with you. Where do you where do you see things going in the future when it comes to all the work you're doing? Well, I mean, you know, it's going to revolutionize every industry, every aspect of life, every right. aspect of how we play, how we work, all of that. So, uh, and the, the key is, uh, you know, not a lot of people really understand this technology, how to harness it, how to create uh, value from it, how to prosper from it, how to you know, mm -hmm. make money out of it and 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 do things that really improve people's lives. Yeah. So my goal is to, you know, keep doing uh, projects like this, right. helping businesses, you know, really understand where this technology can make a difference in their business, right. uh, where like uh, even on a personal level, how people can use it to, you know, grow themselves internally. Like a lot of people don't want to meditate, for example. Mm -hmm. So I... Uh, we create technologies using AI, which actually helps you to reach that meditative state just yeah. using technology. So the idea is to just keep uh, transforming the world uh, in as many ways as possible with, with this technology. And uh, in terms of reaching out to me, you know, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, Google my name. I'm easy to find. Uh, yeah, I mean, website, us, uh, we have we have unique names. You're not going to meet another Majuv or as one Crookshake, so it's not going to yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. You were saying something? No, okay. yeah. So I have a website, manujagarwal.com. Yeah. And, and uh, my company website is tetranoodle.com. So mm -hmm. if you guys own a business who want to uh, implement AI, you can come through my business uh, website. If you want to uh, work with me privately, you know, you can reach out to me through LinkedIn or uh, my website. Uh, but the key is like AI is going to generate trillions and trillions of dollars in the next uh, decade. There's right. going to be more billionaires made in the next decade than any time in history because of AI. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, my my desire is that I help as many people take advantage of this opportunity and uh, change their lives, their lives, their families' lives, mm -hmm. their communities' lives. You know, uh, it, it's just a powerful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Manuj, Manu, so the way I close out all the shows is I want you to use your imagination a little bit. You are just moved. You just moved here from India. You are struggling. You are back and you're dealing with the breakup. You're struggling, trying to see a kid. You're, you're that guy that's trying to figure out. I want you to pretend that that young person has come into the Zoom room. And I want you to be you now to talk to that young person, give him some words of encouragement. And we'll officially close with that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I always say just follow your heart and life will take care of you. Everything will be fine. Universe got your back and uh, just keep listening to your heart and follow your heart. Amen to that, man. Keep listening to your heart. All right. This has been a this has been incredible. I'm excited to go back and listen to this. I'll have a whole notepad ready. Just making sure I've jotted everything down because you you I, I will say this. You have changed my perception on AI and how to use it. And I've never heard someone talk about it as a way of building relationships and becoming actually something that helps you build relationships as opposed to the opposite where you're staying stuck behind some technology or something like that. So appreciate the work you're doing, man. Keep it up, keep doing some great things, man. Thank you. And and you have such a positive energy. So I, I really want to uh, recognize that. It, it's been a really good conversation because your energy is just coming through the screen. Ah, uh, man. Thank you. Thank you. I've been doing this for a long time, so I definitely uh -huh. appreciate that. All right, fellow teammates, continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.